It was once home to all life on Earth. The ocean still holds around four in five of all living things. Much of its vast biomass lives in depths that have been beyond the reach of humans. Until now. Deep sea technology has revealed a world of wonder. A world where exotic creatures thrive in extreme conditions, where life should not exist. The pioneering exploration of this new frontier has also revealed a fragile, vulnerable world that we waste at our peril. The Open Ocean by Emily Lamberson The open ocean, which can also be referred to as the pelagic zone, is defined as 12 nautical miles away from the shoreline. The ocean can be broken up into five layers, number one being the epipelagic zone, or the upper open ocean. Number two is the mesopelagic zone, or the middle open ocean. Number three, the bathypelagic zone, or the lower open ocean. Number four, the abyssopelagic zone. And number five, the hadopelagic zone. Now, the epipelagic zone, which is located from the surface of the ocean down to 200 meters or 600 feet in the water, is the part of the ocean where there is enough sunlight for algae to utilize photosynthesis. The algae in this zone are responsible for most of the original food production along with 50% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. This zone is also where 90% of all ocean life is located. The most common living things found in this zone include sharks, tuna, jellyfish, sea turtles, whales, seals, zooplankton, coral, and many, many more. Next is the mesopelagic zone, which is located from the bottom of the epipelagic zone, which is 200 meters to the point where sunlight cannot reach, so about 1,000 meters or 3,300 feet deep. The mesopelagic zone is much larger than the epipelagic zone and contains the same animals as in the epipelagic, but it is where the animals go to hide during the day to stay away from their predators. Following the mesopelagic zone is the bathypelagic zone, or the lower open ocean. This zone starts from about 3,300 feet and ends at approximately 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet. Interesting fact is that the bathypelagic zone is 15 times larger than the epipelagic zone. Organisms living in this zone live in complete darkness, 24 hours of the day, but can be interrupted by some organisms shining their own lights. This is called bioluminescence, which can be used to attract prey or a mate. Some bioluminescent species include anglerfish, gulper eel, vampire squid, viper fish, and many more. Other species in the zone have no sense of sight whatsoever. Next on the list is the abyssopelagic zone, which goes from the bottom of the bathypelagic zone to the sea floor about 6,000 meters. This zone is always in darkness and is characterized by being extremely cold with lack of nutrients. The inhabitants include the giant squid and the giant tube worm. This area is truly abyss. The last zone is called the hadopelagic zone. In this zone, deep trenches occur in the otherwise flat seafloor. The open water filling those trenches is the hadopelagic zone itself. The deepest known depth is about 7 miles. The average climate in the epipelagic zone averages from about negative 3 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius. The mesopelagic zone varies from about 4 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius, the bathypelagic zone stays constant at about 4 degrees Celsius, and the abyssopelagic zone averages at about 2 degrees Celsius to 3 degrees Celsius.
The average yearly precipitation in the open ocean is around 95,000 cubic miles, most of which falls in the western oceans. The ocean floor is composed of three different types of soil, known as pelagic sediments or marine sediments. They include calcareous ooze, red clay, and siliceous ooze. A recent study which has mapped the total human impact on the seas for the first time has revealed that the picture is far worse than the scientists imagine. Forty percent of the world's oceans have been heavily affected by human activity, including fishing, coastal development, and pollution from shipping. And lastly, to finish off my presentation, an interesting video.